Hello geometry students. Um, this is a video about what we would have covered if we were in school um, for a normal school year and talking about our circles unit. So there's some vocabulary that we skipped over, um, but before we do that, I just want to do a quick review. First, um, we know what a radius is. Um, it is uh, a line segment who, whose one endpoint is the center of the circle and another endpoint is on the circle like this or like this or uh, like this. So we have lots of radii here. So why don't we um, just keep the one in blue and we'll say, okay, that one's the radius. Uh, the diameter, we know that that's a line segment whose two endpoints are on the circle and it passes through the center. So our diameter, our example here is BC. We've also talked about arcs as being um, portions of a circle circumference. It could be something like going from B to D. It could be going also from something like F to H. These are all arcs. There are lots of arc examples here. Something that's new is that we haven't talked about is a major arc. So a major arc, it has the word major in it, which means that it's bigger than half. So we're going to have an arc, like for example, that goes all the way from B past H past F past C all the way to G. And this is a major arc. So B, we'll say B, H, G, because it's bigger than a semicircle. It's bigger than half the circle. On the other hand, there are also things called minor arcs, and these are the arcs that are less than half a circle. So something like D, E, or maybe something like FC. These are minor arcs. So DE is an example, so is FC is an example as well. And notice that for major arcs, we usually use three letters to name them. That way we're really clear about which direction we're going. Also, um, we would have defined formally that a semicircle is an arc that's exactly 180 degrees. It's exactly half the circle. So it's this purple arc here. So that is some vocabulary. And then um, in addition to all these types of arcs, we have something called chords, tangent lines, and secant lines. So first, what is a chord? A chord is a line segment whose endpoints are on the circle. And that's the only criteria it has. So a chord, we'll do it in red here, would could be like F, G. So as an example, it'd be F, G. It's a line segment whose endpoints are on the circle. This could also be a diameter. A diameter is a chord. but not all chords are diameters, like F, G. Tangent line. A tangent line is a line that touches one point on the circle and only one point. For example, if I draw a line here and it only passes through point H, this line here is what we call a tangent line. And point H is the point of tangency. So we can have a tangent line here. We also could have another tangent line. I'm just going to erase some of these highlighting that we can see it a little bit better. We also could have a tangent line, maybe make this a little bit thicker. There we go. That goes whoa, through D. Oh, well, that goes through a point, but it's not D. This is another tangent line. Um, this is a tangent line that passes through E. These are all tangent lines. Now, there is something different called a secant line. And a secant line passes through two points on the circle. So it could actually be something like this. 
This right here is a secant line. All right, so that's some vocabulary we would have talked about. Uh, tangent lines are particularly helpful because um, they have some special properties that we would actually use later. Um, for example, tangent lines are perpendicular to the radius um, to the point of tangency. So we know that's at 90 degrees. All right, so this is some vocabulary. Um, there's also, uh, depending on your teacher, you may or may not have done this, but um, we also would have talked about calculating arc length. So arc length is a portion of the circle in terms of its circumference. So it's a distance. Now, previously, uh, when we talked about arcs, we talked about arc measure. And this was a degree out of 360. So how, how is arc measure related to arc length? And in fact, they are very related. But since arc measure is degrees out of 360, arc length, since it's a distance, is out of circumference. So I'm going to go ahead and make that smaller again. Shade in. Uh, so here, let's do a little bit of exploration about how arc length gets calculated. So first, we're going to shade in a 45 degree sector. So that's an eighth of the circle. I'm just going to cross this into fourths and then eighth. So I'll shade in. It's not perfect, but you get the gist. So this is 45 degrees here. This is a central angle, which means this arc measure is 45 degrees. It asks us to find the circumference of each, knowing that our radius is 4. Circumference is equal to diameter times pi. So if our radius is 4, our diameter is equal to 8. So our circumference is 8 pi. We can do the same thing for this circle here. Pardon my sketching. Radius is 6. So that means our diameter is 12. Circumference is equal to 12 pi. Radius of 2. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Radius of 2. Diameter is equal to 4. 4 pi. So we have an eighth of the circle in each of these three. It doesn't matter um, what the radius is, it's still an eighth. So the arc length of a 45 degree arc ab above is going to be an eighth of the circumference. So we know that um, the arc length divided by the circumference should equal the central angle over 360 degrees. So it should match that ratio, that fraction. So in this case, we know that 45 over 360 degrees, so that will be our arc length over our circumference. And we know that 45 degrees over 360 is exactly one eighth. And we'll do some algebra skills to undo. And we'll get x is equal to pi. So our arc, did we have, we'll say units, because I don't think we were given centimeters or anything. Nope. So our arc length is pi units long. So if we're going to do that again for a different circle with a different radius and a different circumference. We will have our arc length, that's the unknown, divided by our circumference, that's 12 pi. So now we're doing it for this one. Divided by our, our angle here is still 45 degrees over 360. So we're just going to simplify that to 1 eighth again. We'll undo just like we did before. Multiply by our denominator to undo. X is equal to 12 pi over 8 units long. So that's the length of our arc. I encourage you to pause the video and try this last one first on your own. And we are going to again set up arc length divided by our circumference equals our angle ratio, our central angle ratio undo by multiplying by denominator. All right. So you might be wondering, well, what if we don't have an eighth of the circle? What if we have something random like 
54 degrees. So let's try another example. Draw a circle. Here's a circle. Oops. No, there's not. There you go. That's a circle with a radius of 5.5 centimeters. And we want to know how, what is the arc length of a 54 degree arc? So I'm just going to guesstimate here. Uh, 54 degrees is going to be a little bit bigger than an eighth. That's about 54 degrees, maybe. 54 degree arc. Well, then we know that the central angle is also 54 degrees. So if we want to know what the arc length is, we will set up our ratio and solve for our missing information. So arc length is a thing we don't know. That's what we shaded in red here and here as well. So we'll give that a variable. Our circumference, that's pi times diameter. We have a radius of 5.5 centimeters. So that means our diameter is going to equal 11 centimeters. So that means our circumference is 11 pi. Our arc measure here, that is 54 degrees out of 360. That doesn't change. And then what we want to do is we want to um, undo per usual, multiply by 11 pi, multiply by 11 pi, and we'll get x is equal to, and here's where we're going to use our calculators. We'll do 54 times 11 divided by 360, 1.65 pi if you're leaving it exact, which is approximately 5.184 uh, centimeters long. That's our arc length. If you need to take a break, go ahead and take a break because we are not done with the stuff we would have taught you. So I'm going to keep on chugging. Something else that we would have taught you is how to write an equation of a circle. So we would have done a whole exploration activity about this and what each part means, but unfortunately we are not together, so we are going to learn it over the video if you so desire. An equation of a circle on a coordinate plane like the one below is given by the equation x minus h quantity squared plus y minus k quantity squared is equal to r squared. So r stands for our radius, and h comma k are the coordinate points of the center of the circle. So for example, here, Our center of our circle is at, this is one, one, two, three, four, one comma negative four. That looks like the center of the circle. Yep, it is. And our radius is one, two, three, four. Our radius is four. So when we t look at that circle and we have these components, what we can do is we can take the uh, general equation, x minus h quantity squared plus y minus k quantity squared equals r squared, we're going to fill in the h, k, and r. So here we have h comma k, and here we have r. So we're going to put r here, h, that's 1, y minus negative 4. And now when we have minus minus, we turn that into a plus, so x minus 1 squared plus y plus 4 squared equals Four squared. And this right here is the equation of this circle on the coordinate plane. Now, if the circle is centered at the origin, 0, 0, then the equation becomes x squared plus y squared equals r squared because h comma k is 0. So let's do another example. Here we can see that our radius is 5. So r is equal to 5, h is equal to 0, k is equal to 0, and we have the equation x squared plus y squared equals 5 squared. And this equation gives us this circle. 
We also can work backwards. If we're given a circle equation like this, we can figure out what the um, center is and what the radius would be. So here we have our points. And so we got to remember actually that it always goes minus h minus k. And so here, since it is, there is a minus sign here, then the h is 7. So our x coordinate is 7. For the y value, well, it goes minus k, but there's a plus here. So there's this means that this is actually minus negative 5, which means that this negative 5 is our y value. And this 4, oh no. Sorry, folks. This 4 is 4 is equal to r squared. So we actually have to undo by square rooting to get just plain old radius. Our radius is 2, not 4. So we're, we're working backwards from the equation that we're given to determine the parts of the circle. Again, we have one last thing that we would have taught you. So if you want to take a break, please go ahead and pause. Or if you feel satisfied, you do not need to continue. But we are going to keep going. So tangent lines. What is a tangent line? We, we talked about this earlier, but tangent lines are um, lines that touch just one point on the circle. They pass through one point on the circle, like that. And when we draw in a radius to that point, they actually form a 90 degree angle. So the other thing that we'd focus on with tangent lines is actually writing the equations of, um, equations of these lines. So first, the point of tangency is the point that it passes through. So that was 3 comma 7. And this is actually a tricky one because the slope of this radius here is actually uh, undefined because it's a vertical line. And the slope of a horizontal line, that's um, what we're asking about, slope of the tangent line here, is 0. So we want to use y minus y1 equals m slope times x minus x1, where x1, y1, this is our point of tangency. So we're writing equations of line like we did in algebra. And so we'll, here we'll fill this in. y minus 7 equals slope, that's 0, x minus well, 0 times anything is 0, so this actually can just be written y is equal to 7. And that's our tangent line. We can do a couple more examples just to show you how we might use this information. So here is our tangent line to the blue. We can ignore this. This is our center point here. And... We want to draw in a radius because that's what tells us that uh, we're perpendicular. And first we're going to figure out what is this point of tangency. Okay, 1, 2, so that's negative 2, comma, 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 4. Slope of the radius. So slope of the radius, we'll do that in yellow. So we're going to create a little slope triangle. 1, 2, 1, 2. So it's going um, up 2 and to the right 2. So that is 2 over 2, which equals 1. Now, how do we get slope of the tangent line? Well, since they are perpendicular lines, perpendicular lines have opposite reciprocal slopes. So opposite meaning since this one's positive, this one's going to be negative, And reciprocals meaning fractions, the numerator's and the denominators flip. That actually doesn't apply here with 1 over 1, so it's just negative 1 here. So our equation of the tangent line, we're still going to use this point-slope form. So y minus negative 4 equals our slope, negative 1, times x minus negative 2. And you can clean this up a little bit to y plus 4 equals negative 1x times x plus 2. 
So we'd just be writing equations of lines here. If you so care, you can um, do one last example with me. Here is another circle. We're going to draw in a radius. We're going to draw in a tangent line. They are perpendicular, so they're at that 90 degree angle. The point of tangency is 5, 4. To find the slope of the radius, we're going to draw in uh, a slope triangle. And I believe that slope is indeed 2 over 2, which is just 1. Slope of the tangent line opposite, so now it's going to be negative, reciprocal, 1. Equation of the tangent line, we have everything we need. So we'll have do y minus our y coordinate is equal to our slope times x minus our x coordinate. And there you have it. That is more or less what we would have done if we were in school together during this unit. If you have any questions, feel free to talk to me or um, ask about uh, getting some of these challenge problems. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.